You mentioned this a, a few minutes ago where you said you were hanging by a string. I want to go to that. This podcast, honestly, is about these moments in life where shit could have turned left, and then at the last minute it turned right, and you got a good story there for that, because that, oh. that was this project. Well, we finished the record with... Okay, I'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, we finished the record with No Doubt and Matthew, delivered the record to Interscope, and they said no. Now, this is the one you said they gave you 200 grand to do, which you had to fight to get the 200 grand. Right, right. Okay. They said, no, maybe we should just go back to the original plan of having her as a solo artist. So I went home to England for Christmas and I thought, this is over. Yeah, it's this done. Is not gonna happen. We're done. So I went back to work early January, walked into the office and like, uh, okay, what are we going to do with No Doubt? What are we going to do with the Were you thinking about how you're going to break it to the band that they were going to like get dropped then at this yeah, point or well, what? They phoned me up. And it felt like a nail in the coffin because they said, we want, to, we want to fire our manager. He's not doing enough for us. And I said, listen, guys, this is a big mistake. You know, this guy's connected. He has connections with radio. If we get the right track, we could probably get some radio play to stimulate, you know, the launch of the record. I mean, this is not the time to fire your manager when you just finish the record. Now the label was a little, they were growing a little tired of waiting for this to do well. And now here's the band on the other side saying, we want to get rid of our manager, which you think would put a monkey wrench in things further. So you're kind of fucked on both sides of this thing, right? Well, it sends the wrong, it sends the wrong message to the record company that you don't believe in your oh, management. Oh. As I'll go to the manager and say, look, I did all I could. I'm sorry, but you're fired. He said, fuck. You had to deliver this to the manager? Oof. He God, said, okay. can't you do anything? I said, I've been, I drove down to Orange County, sat with them for like three or four hours. And they're, they're adamant. He said, oh, yeah. something went on. He said, I'm walking out the door. He says, ah. Oh. He says, what do you think happened with the band? I said, I don't really know. He says, well, I've got another girl. I said, oh. I said, uh, what's her name? He said, it's a girl named Alanis Morissette. I said, who? She was a teenage pop idol that did moles, did that whole Tiffany kind of breaking records in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I said, he gave me a, a cassette of, of her. So I'm listening to this and I'm hearing records. So I started to pursue that at the same time as I was trying to figure out what to do with No Doubt. Yeah. And what happened was I went to Matthew Wilder's place. He played me the finished record. We went through the tracks one by one. And I said, the only track that really, really sticks out to me is a song called Don't Speak. Mm. But it's a ballad. It doesn't really represent what the band is, especially if, if you're trying to... Uh, brand the band in some kind of way. Yeah, that, that's the which the record first record with. is the most important record. He said, yeah. well, there's a good, what about, you know, Just a Girl? I'm Just a Girl. What about that song? I said, eh, it kind of bounces around. Eh, yeah, it's pretty good because it does this female statement thing. And it, she was going through her relationships, Gwen, that is, with the Tony, the bass player. They had split up. So she was writing about their... Well, that's what split. Don't Speak was about, right? Yeah. That's a lot of that, what uh, Tragic Kingdom was. Well, I, met, I met with Alanis, and yeah. then she was working with a, a really good record producer, and he played me a song called You Ought to Know. Mm. And I heard it, and fuck, this will never get on the radio. Because it's an angry female? Because it's <laughs> an angry female doing this thing. But I thought, well, wait a minute. What's hard rock? With the male. That's all fucking angry. Why can't a woman Axel be fucking Rose angry? Axl Rose is that guy, right? Or whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I went to Jimmy and Jimmy said, eh, that's an interesting song. That's a really good song and stuff. But Ted wouldn't sign it. Oh my God. I remember you telling me this. And um, I remember at the 11th hour when some other label is going to pick it up. Didn't you say you went to Ted's Bentley and wrote a, a handwritten note and put it on his yeah, Bentley so I signed this girl. <laughs> but it was too late by then. I'm surprised though. Can I be honest? I'm surprised that Jimmy didn't like get get that because i feel like that would be an artist where jimmy would get it and and like force it through i think it was, i think it was just a bad time for jimmy because there was stuff going on in his world with the rap stuff and everything mm. else we were number one at one point to sign her alanis mm. and then we became number two or number three and i think it was madonna's uh label maverick maverick that signed that alanis signed her I mean, that, that makes sense, but that's, that's crazy because that one went on to do like 25 million 
as did Tragic Kingdom, so you could have could have had, had fifty million <laughs> records under your belt, Tony. That would have been but, fun. <laughs> but, 